So hello, everybody, including George, who is asleep on Donovan's desk. <laughs> Hope you are well. This is the Demetra K Show, and I am Demetra K. We are not live. I want to say that right off the top. But we will be back live later at 5 p.m. Central Time, uh, and we're going to have a great conversation. Also, like to say, I know a lot of uh, people have been feeling the type of way, feeling like we've been ignoring uh, the comment section. We really haven't been. When I say we, I mean me. I'm the one that, you know, read the comments. It's just been so many people show up, which is a blessing. Um, and um, I don't want to say a curse because that's not what it is, uh, but just not able to read everybody's comments the way I used to. But I'm going to try to get a little bit better at it. But nevertheless, the purpose of the Demetri K show is to promote black love, knowledge, knowledge and understanding of all things that go on in the black community to make us a better people because we are great people. But we can always strive to do better. I like to say a big giant thank you to Donovan, the recovering Democrats League, also known as the Black Yule Brenner. He is still recovering and he's going to you know, they say once an addict, always an addict. Once a Democrat, always a Democrat. Is that is that what we're OK? Is this forever in recovery? But nevertheless, we are going to talk about the first night of the Democratic National Convention that took place last night. Donovan and I both watched. Admittedly, I watched up until uh, Jamie Ranskin, uh, Raskin. Um, I fell asleep, uh, you know, because a little bit later here than when Donovan, I, I, and I go to bed early, I fell asleep. But I did uh, watch the other speeches uh, this morning on double speed, might I add. So we're going to uh, give our take on that. And so, Donovan, how are you this fine afternoon? I am doing great. Welcome back. Thank you for having me on this great platform. Again, you and Phil Scott are doing a great job on African Diaspora News Channel. By the way, you guys, African Diaspora News Channel, don't forget to download, subscribe, become a member. You can do that on uh, Google Play and Apple Store. You guys, uh, you had a story the other day. I mean, you be putting it down when, when you know when the videos be going down. So I got to give you some props on that. I mean, I'm I'm glad everything I taught you that you're applying. Okay, <laughs> so it's very very good there. Uh, so don't forget to uh, subscribe to the African Diaspora News Channel again on Google Play and Apple Store, and then um, for the page for you guys that want to contribute and you know and continue to motivate the content creator to make great uh, videos. It does take time, effort, and time to make these videos and get this information out. There's a way you could donate cash app, PayPal, Venmo, cash check, money order, maybe some bartering in there. I don't know, but you know, anything that, that you guys uh, send is greatly, greatly appreciated. And again, we know you guys can click through all these YouTube videos, all the stuff going on in the world. We greatly appreciate you guys that click the videos, hit the likes button, you share it on your platforms. Every little thing that we do to get these messages out and wake people up is great, especially in the black community. We are living in a great time, Demetra, because this is the time where we are seeing more black people are not going to continue to vote for nothing. Absolutely, 100% co-sign everything you said. All right, so let's get into it. So last night was the first night of the Democratic National Convention. Of course, the Republicans had there, as I would say, maybe a month ago to this point. Um, <clears throat> but uh, that's basically where they... Uh, officially nominate their candidate, and their candidate is that of Vice President Kamala Harris, who originally it was supposed to be that of Joe Biden, but of course we know that Joe Biden stepped down after his abysmal performance with uh, during a debate with Donald Trump, where it was just clear that uh, President Biden had some other things going on and potentially due to age, right? He's like 80, 81 at this point. So uh, from that point, he stepped down and Kamala was like, all right, I, I'll do it. So he said she's the, the woman for the job and she agreed to do it. Um, it should say that never did anyone vote for her per se, like they did during the primaries where people go to the polls and say, okay, this is who I want to represent the ticket in November. Um, it was just kind of, she inherited it. Just for lack of better words, she inherited it. Not unconstitutional. It is within the realms of the constitution, but nevertheless, Last night kicked off and they had a whole host of people speaking. You had your Karen Basses, um, you had your Jasmine Crockett, you had Ralph Warnock. I'll tell you all the people I saw. I didn't I didn't watch all of the, you know, the, the smaller speeches. I did hear about them, but I saw um Hillary Clinton, AOC, uh, like I said, I fell asleep on Jamie Raskin, Raskin, I think that's how you said. Um, who else did I see? Oh, ah, some other people. Like, I, it'll, it'll come back to me. Uh, but I did. Johnson. Okay, like so that. I didn't see him. 
I heard see, yeah, that he opened the convention actually. Okay, yeah, because yeah, it's in Chicago, by the way, which is he's the mayor of, and y'all know all the things that's going on in there uh, with the migrants and the black residents. But I saw a few speeches, and as I said, I watched them uh, the rest of them this morning. But I also saw uh, the commercials and things. Oh, I, I I don't know if they were commercials, but they're videos, montages, if you will, um, of Trump. And they had one that sounded like it was in a law voice of Law and Order. Talking about him being a predator and just a, you know, a, a horrible person, right? Scoundrel, this guy, you know, and arguably, yeah, some of those things are true. Um, then they talked about Kamala. Uh, she was this brave person on the schoolyard, and she, you know, stood up to bullies and told a story about how her childhood friend was being abused by her stepfather, and she told her mom, and she was allowed to stay there with them, and you know. Uh, that kind of stuff. But even the stuff that I watched and, and all of them, they talked a bunch of stuff about, oh, I saw the uh, uh, United Auto Worker U um, Union president. He had a shirt on that said Trump is a scab. That's what they call, I guess, somebody who's against the union. Uh, but out of all the things I saw and heard, I still didn't find it one reason that I should vote for Kamala. Now, I've said this to people who talk to me about it. I said, I'm looking for a reason to vote for her. Somebody said, you are? I said, well, aren't we all looking for a reason to vote for somebody? That's the way we should be doing, right? We should be looking for a reason to vote for a candidate. Not because they're black, they're a woman, or they're white, or they're orange, or whatever it is, right? We need something, as for me, and I would say for black Americans, we're looking for a reason to say, okay, I'm going to go in the booth because we're getting reparations, we're getting a hate crime bill, there's real police reform, you know, we're going to get some land, you know, for they can amuse that time. Well, I'm looking for a reason to go in there. And out of all of those people that spoke, they honestly, I don't know if that was the format of, of Monday night, the first night, was to take Donald Trump to task. I didn't feel, I, I, nobody told me why I should go vote for Kamala other than when she first started out as, you know, a, a prosecutor, it was Kamala Harris for the people. That was kind of their theme, right? She was for the people. Um, AOC, you know, uh, Jasmine Crockett talked about how she was very instrumental in uh, freeing the hostages in Russia. And I'm like, really? But she wasn't, it was, she wasn't instrumental in freeing the prisoners here that she had. Uh, uh, and, and in prison here, she was trying to keep him up in there. See what I'm saying? And the other thing that I was saying, one of the things I learned about last night is they really love abortion. They really, the, the, the Democrats, I didn't realize how much they really loved abortion until like all those people, they had some a lady get up there and say that she was impregnated, which is horrible, by her stepfather at the age of 12. And via that, she, you know, was able to um, get an abortion. Like, but they're saying now what the uh, what Trump wants to do is to get rid of uh, the abortion at all together, which sounds like lately he has changed his stance. I don't know if he went back. Um, so they talked about those things. And I want to say, too, I don't think people really realize that, yeah, women get abortions due to rape. But that is one percent of why women get abortions. Right. But that's what they play on. Oh, it's just that. That's one percent, probably less than one percent of women actually. Do. So I learned that they love ab ab abortion. Um, love that they hate Trump. Uh, uh, real quick. Did, did you hear that they had you even had the clinics at the convention? I that heard was, that. Yeah. That's I'm not saying they were like abortion clinics. That's what I'm saying. But they had oh. like, you know, information and, you know, how to do that. Like they it was all in booths and stuff. It was, it was, it was crazy. So. Yeah, so they they and you know they they outline how Trump is a horrible person that they really love abortion and that Kamala is for the people, but they never really said how. So I may be thinking tonight and the next night they're gonna really define how Kamala is for the people. But even as the first night, I didn't hear anything specific to Black Americans. I didn't I didn't hear anything. And then Ralph Warnock, he got on my nerve. God, Lee, that man looks like Mr. Potato Head for real, for real. He looked like Mr. Potato Head and sound like Barack Obama, which is weird, right? But he talked about how Trump um uh, held up the Bible as if he was endorsing the Bible. And he says, basically, I'm paraphrasing. First of all, he needs to read the Bible. And he did these scriptures and he got all because he's a pastor as well at Martin Luther King's old church. And I'm like. See, I like to debate stuff in real time in my mind. You talking about Trump need to read the Bible. 
you a pastor that happens to be pro-abortion. That is a weird, it's like an oxymoron. It's just, just odd. You're pro-abortion pastor telling somebody else that they need to read the Bible. Help me out, Donovan. Mm. Yes, indeed. That convention was, now, you know, my forte is history. <clears throat> you know, that's why I'm really good at retaining history stuff. In high school, people used to love to take my notes and stuff, and I was really good at history. There are so many parallels to 1968 Democratic convention. Hubert Humphrey was the selective nominee by LBJ when he decided not to run. You see the parallel? LBJ, the Vietnam War destroyed him basically. And this man could have ran for another you know, four years and gone on. And remember, LBJ was the, the, the black man's best friend. He was, you know, all this other great stuff. And he just quit. He just quit. Right. Hubert Humphrey was supposed to be this next great guy, you know, whatever. The, but they got destroyed by this war. So he steps down. And then they had the 68 Chicago Convention in Chicago. And mass violence and protests were happening and things like that. There's an old saying, Demetra, those that do not know their history are doomed to repeat it. Where are we at today? We are repeating. I mean, it's, it's kind of scary to me when you look at this, like, wow, we are going through some of the same stuff. So we looked at the protesters. When I saw, I saw the preliminary stuff, I saw it was supposed to be like 100,000 protesters out there. So there was this, these protesters. It was feminists and LGBTQ for you know, Kamala or freedom, whatever they were saying. And I'm like this, I'm thinking, here are these groups, even if you put these two groups together, they're not a majority. And yet they dictate a good portion of resources of the United States to their small groups. And here they are doing this. I noticed, I saw all of these black people out there protesting with the Palestinians about, you know, the genocide that's going on in Palestine, right? And I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, nothing against that. But if you're asking me, where are these Palestinians when we, when the George Floyd things were happening, when we're asking for reparations, where are these people when, when it comes to a black issue, they're not standing with us. But here I'm seeing, and it's mostly, and this is what I just observed. It was a lot of women out there, black women, are standing with these Palestinian folks. And, and don't get me wrong, I am against genocide, but they gotta fight their own battles right now because I gotta fight my battle here in the United States. But it just, it, to me, it was crazy to see how we stand up for all of these other groups. And then when, when we need something, they don't stand up for us. I didn't see any Hispanic person, George Floyd, stand up and use the power of the uh, press and make statements. I didn't see any Palestinians, Ethiopians, whatever you want to call it, standing up when we have issues. They know what we want, Demetra. They're not doing it. Brandon Johnson opens the convention with his speech and it was basically empty. If you guys have been watching the Democratic National Convention, did you guys notice the very top of the nosebleed area, all blackened out? In most conventions, it's sold out. The stadium is sold out. You can't get to because people want to be there. There was nobody in the top rafters. So when he opened the convention, there were so many open seats. If you go back and look at the video, he's basically talking to a basically empty arena. I mean, there was a couple thousand people there, but it isn't filled, you know. Two hours in after Karen Bass talks, you can still see the empty patches and things that are going on. And I know people are going to make excuses. Well, it was the early stages and all this other stuff. I also want you guys to notice that some of the preliminary speakers, Karen Bass, uh, AOC, all these people, the preliminary speakers, have you guys noticed that these are the slave catchers that they use to go on the networks and stuff and talk about what the black people ain't going to get, but what everybody else is going to get? To me, the Democratic Convention, what I saw in it was you are actually seeing the players that are against black people getting reparations and black people doing anything or even against the American people dealing with the homeless issue. These are the gatekeepers. 
you're witnessing the gatekeepers in real time. These are the people that are preventing you from getting your benefits. Notice that Warnock is up there, right? This is a man that was throwing people out of, out of his uh, apartment buildings and all this other stuff. He's a pastor and all this, but yet we didn't. people didn't get the George Floyd Act. We didn't get anything that they said once we put him back in office that we would get. And since his time of being reelected re into that position, what has he actually done? Have you guys noticed the people that they put up there, when you go and look at their records since they've been in up until this time, what have they done specifically for black people? And what I don't understand, Demetri, is this woman, Kamala Harris, has told us she's not doing anything for us. And it perplexes my mind. Why would I vote for a person that told me they're not going to do anything for me? It, it just blows my mind. Yeah, um, I agree. She has, I didn't hear anybody say that they've changed their, oh, she's changed her mind. But again, you know, it's the first night um, of the convention. So, you know, maybe we're going to learn more. I know um, Obama was supposed to speak. They said Michelle, but I don't know how true that is. Um, Bill Clinton's supposed to speak. Uh, I forget somebody else is supposed to speak. Uh, and eventually, uh, so it's going to be Tim and then it's going to be Kamala. Uh, did I say her name right? Kamala. Ka Ka no, it's Kamala. Kamala, 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 no. no. Um, it's Kamala. 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 <laughs> And I and I jokingly say that because people are really, you know, going yeah. verbal fisticuffs over the pronunciation of her names. Like, but did you notice the people that, that you named did object did objectively harm to the black community? Bill Clinton with the with the reversal of the welfare oh, I system. Don't talk about that. No. Mm -hmm. shh, shh, shh. Don't, don't, don't mention that. You know, and even to that point, you know, like I said, a month or two ago. Kamala was worse than Biden, and you know, now all of a sudden she's just all oh, great person. She's Kamala for the people. Oh, she's going to go off and put her cape on because that's the, what they were setting the uh, tone for last night. Her sister spoke in this video on a neighbor, and uh, uh, and I heard the neighbor's mama. They spoke uh, actually on the stage, you know, about did Willie really Brown speak? Did Montel Williams speak? We ain't see them yet. They might come on out, you know, I don't know, but you know. They didn't. It, Joe Biden obviously spoke, and they, he they sound like he went over. He spoke for I think was it fifty something minutes. He spoke, and it's like it was just late at night. They put him yeah. at the end of the day. Well, I can get them wanting to do that for him to close it out. They also I was listening to some pundits saying that it was rather long that people spoke for a long time. You know which I thought it was too, which is why I was like, I'm not going to be watching all this tonight. I'm going to get up in the morning and put it on double play so I can watch it faster. Right. Um, but yeah, like I said, last couple of months ago, she was the worst thing since the worst thing, whatever that is. Now all of a sudden she's just America's sweetheart and she's coming to save the day and you know, all this other stuff. Joe Biden got up there and we forget the crime bills that he wrote and the harm that he did, the irreparable harm that he has done to black people. You know, there's still pe black people in those prisons from the crime bills that he wrote, forgetting, well, we don't forget, but I guess apparently a lot of people have, that generations of black people have been destroyed by a lot of those, you know, crime bills. And, you know, let's keep it a buck. Kamala helped do that as well. You know, on one hand, she's going off to, you know, if she's in uh, California, the DA and uh, attorney general, she's, Kamala for the people, you know, she's a prosecutor. So that's what, it, you know, it is. It, the prosecution is for the people, you know, the state or whatever it is, right? But then on the other hand, you're actually harming the people by this, these policies and, you know, these things that you want to put in place, like the truancy thing and uh, back on track. Uh, you know, somebody talked about how she wanted to do the body cams. She was championing the body cams. But it's like, I forgot to say she was against it. So now y'all just sitting up here lying, making Kamala more palatable than she really is. See, because listen, y'all have heard me say a copious amount of times on this show, I believe in redemption. I don't think depending on what it is you did. Now, I don't think that you should have to pay for something your whole life. So 
Kamala has not been contrite. She's flat out lied about the things that she's done to people. She's not sorry, right? So with her being this hero, she's just Kamala for the people. You've harmed people and nobody. That's why I call them Kamala's nobodies. Not that they're nobodies to me, but when every time she says, nobody got her, he, he, he. nobody got her. It's just something I'm just trying to scare the parents. But nobody got you turn them into nobodies and they're not a nobody. So I'm just confused, Donovan, as to how all of a sudden, I guess what's going on in Gaza, that don't matter either. Congo, Ukraine, and then I had some Negro come on my page uh, uh, in the comment section. Well, you need to understand the relationship that the uh, United States has with Ukraine. They said they were going to do this. Down there. I said, what you ain't going to do is school me on the relationship with Ukraine and the United States. I know that the United States helped get Ukraine in a trick bag by telling them to give up all your nuclear weapons and uh, us, Russia, and Britain will protect you. And yet now it's Russia and Ukraine in the war and the United States is like, well, they did that. So y'all said, you ain't going to tell me, but what does that got to do with anything? What does that got to do with black people here in America? And now all of a sudden people forgetting Kamala and the history that she has with black people. You know, and, and, and it's scary that, that 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 they feel so comfortable lying outright to American people. But see, I got to give it to them. We do have short memory stands or people just don't give a damn because, OK, they're calling her a hero. Fine. You can call anybody here. They've watered down the word hero. It's just ridiculous. Policemen are hero. Firemen are heroes. Uh, nurses are heroes. Doctors a sandwich are heroes. is a hero. Right. Hero sandwiches. You know, instead of, you know, dealing with our wait, our military is real heroes. But yet there's almost a million of them homeless. This is how we treat our heroes. So they call her a hero and she did all these courageous things and whatever. When was the last time I ever heard of a hero sweeping with a married man? And not that that's a big deal, but I'm just saying, so what are we saying here? Why didn't they bring that up? Is, is she a hero to Willie Brown's wife? Is she a hero to Montel Williams and, you know, dating Montel Williams? Have we forgotten how this woman skipped the line using what she got to get where she, where she wants to go? Have we Was she a hero to Mitrice Richardson's family when they begged her to open the case of what looked like possibly, and I believe personally, is a murder, she's going to use another thing and say, well, nothing I can do. Statutes of limitations have run out. But yet you didn't hold any L.A. Sheriff's uh, Department investigation to see what actually happened in that situation. But she's a sister girl. This was a young, beautiful black woman, educated Cal State Fullerton, that was basically, from what I understand, murdered and it is still unsolved to this very day they still do not know what happened and she turned her back on that family so is she a hero when she does things like that does a hero keep thousands of people incarcerated past their their sentencing all because it was going to uh, give a shortage to the california slave labor force does is that what heroes do i'm confused then what hero you know and it kind of hurts me because there's a lot of older people that think kamala harris is the answer and they call themselves christians like i said the abortion thing is one thing they're not reading their bibles whatever but they call kamala uh this person's going to fix everything what hero is going to keep a man on death row knowing that there is evidence possibly that can exonerate him. See, when people say prosecutor and they say, you know, and I agree with you, they represent the victims. I, I get that. I, you know, I understand that. But a prosecutor's job is not necessarily to represent, in my opinion, the victim or the defendant. I think a prosecutor's job is to seek justice. Justice. So if there's evidence that could probably exonerate this person that's been accused, you should go with that evidence and say, you know what? And, and Dimitri, you're familiar with that story. It took the governor and Di the late Diane Feinstein to say, well, we don't know if this person is innocent or guilty, but we should at least give him a DNA test. 
and that man is sitting on death row to, uh, to this very day. What hero is going to keep a person on death? You had no problem letting the man be killed. Had no problem. And said, oh, well, what it is. And then when she's confronted with the thousands of cases that were thrown out because of the crime lab being tainted, she had the nerve to say, I didn't know anything about it. Wait, the buck is supposed to stop with you. It doesn't matter if you knew anything about it or not. The point is, thousands of cases were tainted under your watch. How come they're not bringing that part up? But they're telling you all of this stuff. Why didn't they bring up the fact that, hey, well, what hero says, I'm not going to do anything specifically for your group, for Black people? No, I'm not going to do that. But yet you did something specifically for the AAPI community. You did something specifically for the LGBTQ community. That doesn't sound like a hero to me. And, and last but not least, I have a problem when a person keeps saying on day one, I'm going to fix this, I'm going to fix that. So you're in power right now. So you're admitting that your policies got us to this point. Why aren't they mentioning that? Very well said. That doesn't sound like it sounds like an anti-hero to me. You don't sound like a, a hero, but you know, also within that montage, they called the uh Trump out for cheating on his wife. You know, is his serial cheat? Yeah, they did. Had that picture of Melania up there with him and stuff. And I'm like, now if Trump goes below the belt, which we know he ain't uh, uh, uh he got scared to do that. I I watched that, I'm like. It's a known fact that Kamala Harris ran around with another woman man out in the open. It was an open secret, right? It's a known fact that she did that. Willie Brown said, yes, it happened. So it ain't, it's not like this is some gossip. It's a known fact. And somebody on the Kamala Harris campaign had the audacity to talk about Trump as a cheater. I was like... But then again, you think about it. They must think the American, well, obviously, it was, it's not, it's been said that, you know, a lot of times Americans have amnesia. Because as I said, a month or so ago, Kamala was hand in hand with Biden. They was going to see the devil together because that's how, you know, bad they were doing. Now all of a sudden, she's just great woman. And now y'all talking about how Trump was cheating and you was running around with another woman husband in, the, in San Francisco and everybody knew you was doing it. And I, it's just, it's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. And so for me, as I said, as with any candidate that's asking me to vote for them, tell me why. I don't care that you were getting treated like a trampoline by a married man. That's your soul to deal with. I don't care that Trump is getting his little Vienna sausages around with, you know, porn. So I don't care because you got to deal with that on your own, right? We all got to answer to the nonsense that we do in life. But if you're asking me for my vote, I want to know why. What's in it for me? What are your policies, ma'am? What are your policies, sir? How am I as a black woman in America going to be better off because I took myself into the booth and cast a vote for you? What's it with them? That is a business term. What's in it for me? Every time we show up somewhere, I don't care what it is, how big or small, we should ask ourselves. Now, now uh, sometimes you, it's nothing in it for you. You just showed up, right? But for the most part, you want me to show up to the booth? Whiff them. Black people need to start using that. Whiff them. All right, Kamala, whiff them. Trump, whiff them. What's in it for me to do that? Last night, I still didn't get that answer. Like I said, it was a name calling fest is what it was. They spent most of, if not all of the night, name calling, calling Trump, everything you could think of, a butter child of God, a rapist, a crook, a thief, a felon, a cheater. They called him everything. Everybody that got up there reminded the American people, and it basically reminded us of the stuff that we already know, right? <laughs> But I didn't feel like I needed to go cast a vote for Kamala because they ran down on Trump the way they did. I felt like, you know what? I'm tired. See, I'm one of those people, if I get to bed and I'm watching TV, 
And then I roll over, I'm gone. And that's what I did. I fell asleep and it was, I, when I woke up, it was already off. You know, uh, as I was watching it, and I'm th thinking the, 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 the elephant in the room for the Democratic Party is the immigration issue. How do you address that? How do you justify what you're doing? Brandon Johnson, who opened it up, city is a plethora of the immigration problem and what is going on. So what I'm looking for in this convention is how they're going to address that, how they're going to address the inflation. What are they going to do specifically for black people? Because at this point, Wait, stop right there. Let's just let's, have, let's, let's, let's talk to, to your bullet okay. points. Okay. Immigration. Okay. Immigration. Uh, I think it was Jasmine Crockett that said the Republicans are stopping the border bill. Now, Donovan, what do we know about that border? How, how did it even get open? Exactly. It was the, the immigration had stopped under the uh, the COVID. I forgot the number of it, whatever it was, but it was remain in Mexico policy. On day one, the Democrats opened that border and a mass flood started happening. As a matter of fact, the Biden administration sued border states for putting up barriers and things of that nature. So we know that this policy is a Democratic policy. You know, people say, well, that was Biden. It wasn't Harris, whatever. She's part of the administration. She's part of that administration. And she is on record that she is for immigration. She believes people that come to this country should be given all of the help that her parents got when they came to this country. She fundamentally- it's not right there. Does she believe it or is she acting on it? She is actually doing both. She believes it and she is acting on it. She is unapologetic. I mean, they have her on record saying this. You know, that is the biggest elephant in the room, because I know people do not agree with me. But in this economic system of capitalism that we practice here in the United States, black people are at the bottom. Illegal immigration. And we're not for we're not against immigration. I'm against illegal immigration. That's what I'm against, because it's not fair that people who came here the right way that have to wait 10 years and whatever, whatever to get here. That's no problem. But when you have illegal immigration, it affects economically the people at the bottom. Where are they sending all of these immigrants mostly? Into pre black neighborhoods, black cities, and giving them unlimited resources. Demetra, the other day, I'm watching that young lady crying, that veteran crying about her food truck. As a matter of fact, you, you did a, a video on it on the African Diaspora News Channel. And it, you know, it was so sad that here she is, she worked, and what if she can't get a loan? Because we know that there's redlining and all this stuff that happens to Black people. Nobody's addressing that issue. Nobody's addressing. The bottom line is this. Ladies and gentlemen, the Democrats are toast without that Black vote, okay? And they're losing. Even the women are, are going. They, if the Democrats want to win and stop using Kamala Harris as a crash test dummy, because that's what it is. They, they haven't put up their best person. Donald Trump just hired Tulsi Gabbard to do uh, debate prepping. And we know Tulsi Gabbard dismantled Kamala Harris in four minutes. And her thing was- Donovan, over. I'm telling you, I all we got to get the question to Tulsi or somebody, <laughs> Kamala, I have a platinum plan for Black Americans. Yes. Why is it that a white man has a plan for Black people and you as a Black woman don't have a plan for your people. Amen. Amen. Done. Complete. But the point is the Democratic Party needs that Black vote. And people are awake and they're seeing all the resources that the migrants get, which was supposed to be resources for the Black folks. Y'all need to start cutting those checks. If you want to win this election, you need to start cutting those checks. And let's talk about that as the Black vote. It said that she's got about 77 percent of the black vote. Donovan, how much of the black vote does Kamala need? She needs at least 85 to 89 percent of the black vote. How much did Barack Obama have? Barack almost had like 97, 98 percent. In that, in, and Hillary had 90. Biden right, had, you mm -hmm. know, somewhere in between there, somewhere mm -hmm. around there. But Kamala, they're saying she has 77%. And Trump, they're saying, they, these polls, 
has 13%. What is the problem in that? Because see, listen, y'all know I suck at math. Donovan is a little bit better at math, but we got we, together. We're pretty good at common sense. To the naked eye, you say, you think, oh, because you put 13% next to 77%. You think, oh, wow, yeah, Kamala, oh, she do, yeah, she doing better than Trump. All right, let's come on, break it on down to common sense because traditionally, as I said the other day, Republicans never get any more than 15% of the black vote. That's a fact. You telling me that Trump has 13% of the black vote when, when he first ran in 2016 and he won, he got 8%. 2020, he got 12. And so even with that one more percent of the black vote, at 13% and Kamala's in the 77% area? Tell me, how does she win without the majority of, she, okay, listen, because the, the one thing about statistics I learned and nothing else and I learned, okay, is how you write it up. Yes, she has the majority of black votes in juxtaposition of Trump's 13%. But she does not have what she needs of the black vote to win, which is why they spend so much money going after the black vote, which is why they have your Rickies and your Rollins and your Steves and your Joys and all the other people. You guys are idiots and you're this and you're that and you're your mama black and you need to be in the hot cooking. That's why they do all of that, because they know that's 77 percent might as well be 7% because Kamala is not doing well with that black voters as they want you to believe. Because check this out. If she was doing that well, you, we wouldn't be getting all this backlash from all those people I just mentioned. And by the way, I don't know if you saw that video rolling getting ran up on by our brother uh, Jamal, I think his name, Green and out of Chicago. See, that's what I always say. It's funny games when you're thumb thugging on the internet until somebody finds you in person. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Right. And, and then speaking of that, I'm glad you brought that up because, uh, you know, I, we really want people to understand this. Don Lemon, who was fired from CNN after bootlegging and all that other stuff, as you know, he lives an alternative lifestyle with his white husband. He was in Atlantic City on the ground. Now, remember, when you're not in those studios, you know, you, you're, you, you know, those people form a narrative. They're just given a narrative and they form it and they go with it. And they, you know, they take their money and they go about their business. This man who was with CNN for all of those years, who basically knew what is basically really going on, basically, he gets on the ground. I don't know if you saw the video, but did you see his face? He was shocked that people were saying Trump, 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 Trump. These are the average everyday people. And even when CNN does those little uh, town halls and stuff, did you see the video with the young girl when she was saying, I can't afford a rent, I can't do this? You know, she was just being honest about what was going on. These people are perplexed. It's like they live in a different uh, world, a, a alternate universe. And they are shocked at what is really going on out here in America. And, you know, going back to the numbers of, of why I know that Democrats can't win. In one of those CNN, MSNBC town halls, they were asking even some of the white women, do you think these white women are going to sit here and just let a black woman become president? Bad enough, she's already a vice president and she's where she's at, how she got there. Aren't these the same white women that did not vote for Hillary? And you expect these women, and Hillary is a highly qualified, even though she's tainted and flawed, she was a highly qualified candidate. And the white women went in there and voted for Trump. So like you said, by the numbers and statistically, using those parameters, you actually think minus the black vote, using the Hillary effect, you actually think that these white women are gonna turn around and vote for a woman who is solely unqualified and they couldn't even vote for Hillary Clinton, even though they were with her. Yeah, I totally agree with you. You know, and I, like I said, 
look at look at the climate of how they deal with black people, the black voter. They are mad. They're angry. They are really angry that black people are saying no more. There's a lot of black voters. Because like I said, and like you said, most Democratic presidents, you know, they get a lion's share of the black vote. And yeah, 77% is still a lion's share, but she ain't in the 80%. She's not in the 90%. You know, because they're trying to play it out like, oh, it's the Barack. It feels like the Barack Obama eras when, you know, people were excited. Barack Obama got almost 100 percent of the black vote. So is it really the Barack? Oh, see what it is. Barack Obama is actually her Achilles heel with black people because we put Barack Obama in the White House twice and he showed black people his narrow behind twice. So. Black people just woke up like, nah, that was, it was cute in theory to have a black man in the White House, but he didn't do anything for us. So we're supposed to go send this so-called black woman to the White House so she could do even less, and which is, I don't know how you do less of nothing, but you know how you do even more of less. And what I'm going to say about Don Lemon is this. Um, I love this Don Lemon. I love this version of Don Lemon. And you know what I think it is ultimately? I think it's ultimately F you. I think it's his ultimate F you to CNN because, you know, they fired him over, you know, uh, I think it was Tulsi Gabbard. One of them he's made that comment about fired him. He uh, Elon Musk was supposed to do a deal with him, which he's suing. Now, mind you, he sold Sue CNN and won. He's suing Elon um, for a bunch of money because he broke the contract of having him on there. So I the well, reason why I say I love this version of Don Lemon, because he's taking it to the street. And like you said, he getting that raw, uncut, unrehearsed, hey, what do you think of this candidate? What do you think? And it's not just, you know, it's people from all walks of life. Now, when he was on CNN, yeah, he had to play by the rules. Over here, we are leftists and we do are for that Democratic president or candidate or whatever it is. And we that's how we speak. But when he's, and, and listen, Don Lemon got more money than he'll ever spend. Because like I said, he just took CNN for a lot of money because he had money on his own. He's about to take Elon for a bunch of money. So he's probably at this point just having fun. Bet. I'm Don Lemon. I got a name. Let me get out here on the, you know, the boardwalk and wherever else and have these conversations. And I'm going to show people, like you said, the real temperature of what's going on in the gr grass, the roots, the ground level of people in America who are saying, I'm voting for this person because, and as we see, even those people that went up to Don Lemon who knew he was on the very leftist uh, television show, they're telling him, I'm voting for Trump. And it's not just white people. It ain't just men. It wasn't just women. It was everybody, young and old. So... And, you know, uh, people are actually seeing the manipulation by the uh, corporate media and how they're, they're they're saying, you know, Trump and her neck and neck. I mean, they had to admit recently that uh, the poll numbers that they reported was wrong. And, they you know, now they're trying to say, oh, it's neck and neck and neck and neck. When when they asked uh, Donald Trump in regards to where he says, I'm way ahead in the polls. I mean, he's not even concerned. He's like, I'm way ahead in the polls. And it goes to show you the, the uh, manipulation that, that they do. But at the bottom line is, if they do not give Black people right now, before they get it on, we're not following. And that's another thing. We're not listening anymore. We're not like our parents who just want to see Black faces in high places. We need substantial tangibles to survive right now. And if, if they're not hearing this, they're not hearing this. Have you guys noticed? Where's Jimbo Clyburn? The fish fries ain't ain't working no more. Where's he Nancy spoke, Pelosi? He he, I, he spoke, and I want to say, I woke up once and he was speaking, and I went mm. back to sleep. Right, right. But what what I'm saying is, these people they go back into the shadows because remember earlier last year, I got the pulse. Uh, I talk to my granddaughters and they tell me what's going on. I have no no doubt Joe Biden is this, 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 that. I mean, he was 10 toes down knowing that black people are going to save democracy. People do not care about democracy when they can't pay their bills. They do not care. These young people are not like their grandparents and their great grandparents. They see what is going on and they see $25,000 house payment. 
This is what she proposes, which is totally ridiculous. Price controls. I mean, the, the basic person knows whatever the deal is. Even if she gave $25,000 and you got an additional $25,000 from the FAHA in, in housing costs, what good is that if your house is over $600,000 and you're not getting a job that pays a certain amount of money that you need to make to, to make the basic house payment? So you're looking at a $600,000 house, $50,000 down payment. You're going to need at least $4,000 a month to make the mortgage if you're going to pay it off in the regular 30-year trajectory. Where are you going to get that money? See, these are the tricks, the accounting tricks that they, they do to make it sound so good and whatever. And when you talk to most economists, and I talked to a really good economist, which is my niece, who went to Spelman, by the way, she said, it's not feasible. These proposals, they're just that. You get me in there. If this woman gets elected, if you think you're in trouble right now, the black people will not come back from this. This would be the dagger in the heart for the black culture. Yeah, and then she's trying to raise the tax rate on the rich 28%. Trump wants to drop it back down to 15%. He originally proposed 21%, but she wants it to be at 28%. So I guess that's how she's supposed to be paying for all the stuff. But like you said, the smoke and mirrors because once you really crunch the numbers, like you said, with the housing, then let's keep it a buck. Uh, the real the uh, real estate uh, sector, they're going to do some technology to get, you know, maximize that $25,000. Like you said, by the end of the day, especially in California, the average price of a house is seven, eight, a hundred thousand. That's average. And that's we ain't talking about no monstrosity of no house either. So it's like you said, you're looking at a four, five, six, seven thousand dollar uh, house payment. So, it's, but like you said, because most people won't do the just even even I don't even know math, but just critical thinking about it. They know people say, "Oh, she got to give twenty five thousand dollars to get you a house." It's like, okay, how long are you going to keep that house? Didn't they do that in two thousand eight? How many black people lost their homes? It's I worked at Taco Bell, but guess what, girl? You can get the three hundred thousand dollar house. It's the, they lost it's it within the, three four months. It's a two thousand twenty four stated loan, as it was back then. You could do that's what it was stated. You state your income. You don't, we don't have to do it. No, 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 no. Don't show us no check stuff, no bank account. This is how much are you making? Oh, well, how much do I need to be making to get this house? Okay, that's what I'm making. You know, like you said, you're working at Taco Bell, you know damn well you can't afford no, you know, $400,000 house. And that's why the the, the market crashed. It's partially why. Is that why they call it a house of cards? You know, eventually it was going to fall. Because it was not sustainable. People were getting houses they knew damn well they couldn't afford. But it was easy to do. And that's why they also called it predatory lending. Because the lenders was like, listen, just say you make this so you can get the house. And that's why I, I fear if that happens, we'll see something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you know, and uh, I'm from California. I've seen it. Las Vegas, Phoenix, just in the general area, the triangle here of the mass housing uh, thing that was going on. You got to think about this. If she wants to help the help the American people, why does she propose banning banks and these uh, corporations from buying residential housing? That would help more than anything else. Steve Mnuchin. Steve Mnuchin uh, helped foreclose on a copious amount of Californians, even to the tune of 27 cents, not 27 percent, 27 cents. And she, Kamala, who was the uh, uh, attorney general or not uh, the, the uh, attorney general, didn't hold him accountable. You know how many black people lost generational wealth because they lost their real estate? And that's why you don't see that's why you don't see any black people in California anymore. We're less than six percent and still losing black people because we can't afford to live here. The the rent, the pricing. Where are the jobs in California? All the major corporations have left. Boeing, Lockheed, they're all out of here. I mean, you know, just the manufacturing is gone in the United States in general. So again, you don't have to be a mathematician, just crunch the numbers. A six hundred thousand dollar house in Texas. Okay, that's the house. What about the property tax? The property tax in some of these uh, states is what is what kills you. 
So how, how do you do that? It's a four or $5,000. Let's say it's a $3,000 mortgage rent. You still got the property tax at the end of the year. How are you going to pay for that? And then the child tax credit she keeps talking about. So you're incentivizing the continual destruction of the single family home. How does that help a man? I'm a single man. I don't have any kids. My kids are grown. So I don't get a tax credit, but this woman who keeps having children gets one. So you're incentivizing. Well, but it's not necessarily that because the child tax credit can be for uh, married couples as well. They have children. So it's not really a single parent thing. Yeah, but, but, but uh, sure. But in our community. It, well, uh, well, even still, you know, uh, but it doesn't help me either. I don't have any small children. You know what I mean? Uh, so I don't get helped by that either. What, what, what do I get? You know what I mean? So you're right. Uh, her economic plan, which she says she's going to give more details in a couple of weeks, is like, you ain't got but, but a couple of weeks. Did you know, you I guess the we... interview when they asked her off the cuff. I want you guys to notice when they asked her when she got off that bus, did you look at her running mate and his wife and her husband? They couldn't even look her in the eye because you know why? They were going to bust out laughing because she was feeding so much BS. A simple question, and she couldn't answer it. Yeah, so... You know, we're going to pay attention to, to uh, tonight, too. I'm going to try to stay awake for it. It was just like, oh, my God. Okay, we get it. Trump is a douchebag. We get it. You know, what else y'all got? That's what, that's kind of where I was. I was like, this isn't about a name calling fest. It's, it was kind of, it's really toxic. And I watched the RNC. Yeah, sure, they said some things, but it, was, it wasn't as, I would say, in my opinion, it wasn't as nasty as it was last night. Like, it was just nasty. And I didn't even, it's to the point to where I didn't even want to watch it no more. We're just like, okay, y'all just keep coming out here saying the same thing. Trump is a cheater. He's a douchebag. He's a, or a sexual predator. Oh, oh. That's going to win the presidency. That, obviously, that doesn't matter to people. That doesn't matter to people, obviously. I mean, look how many people cheat and stuff in their everyday lives. We, uh, I don't want to go to jail because I cheated on my wife. I don't want to do that. I mean, why, why would I be against that? You know what I mean? If I'm, if I'm a, a cheater, but real quick, be, be before we get out of here, have you been keeping up on what's going on in Dalton, Illinois, which is 30 minutes outside of Chicago? The, the former police chief, temporary police chief, Lacey, who was fired because he showed up to work after being put on suspension pending an investigation. He shows up for work, whatever the deal is. They send him a letter. They fire him. Tiffany Henyard, a Democrat, appoints him chief. He can't legally be chief until you're sworn in. But he was also indicted for uh, fraud, uh, some kind of fraud he did, mortgage fraud, not mortgage fraud, um, something he did in regards to bankruptcy fraud. That's what it was, bankruptcy fraud. He's a policeman that can't have firearms right now, but he was fired. The man shows up to work anyway. They have a meeting and he tells the cops, you could do what you want, but anything is in subordination. My, my question is this. Now, remember, Dalton is an 80 something percent black town. Number one, the whole police department needs to be fired. Because if this man is coming to work and you've been fired, you're impersonating a police officer. You shouldn't be having access to the building. But the other day, and this is why I'm bringing this up, Tiffany Henyard and the fired police chief, who she's in cahoots with, showed up with the locksmith to change the locks. And there was a, so allegedly a confrontation between the new temporary appointed police chief and some of the officers and Tiffany Henyard. My question is this, this is a black town. Why hasn't the state police come in and taken over that office in a situation like this where there's a confrontation of leadership, whatever? Only in a predominantly black town, Democrat, are they allowing this stuff to go on? If this was any other city, do you think this would have been going on in Orange County? Absolutely not. The, the sheriff, the Orange County sheriffs would have come in and said, we're not having this. We're, you know, we're going to take charge and do what we got to do. The lawlessness that they allow, the Democratic Party is allowing to go on in that city is atrocious. And I'm not saying anything bad in regards to uh, the mayor being a woman, 
but it is obvious she is compromised in so many ways. Uh, I don't know if you've been keeping up with that, but you know, what, what do you think about that? I mean, I've been hearing a, um, a sum of it. I haven't been keeping up per se, but I've also seen it a couple of other places. I got to look into uh, that uh, black city council members, just a black woman at Jackson, Mississippi. Then another one somewhere, I think it was New York. Don't quote me. Uh, black man got caught up by the FBI uh, for receiving bribes, right? Of course, you know, when they're on the city council, they get the little white envelope here, just going to let my little development go through or whatever. Here's, you know, the money for you. Well, that some I guess the FBI was playing, you know, a developer per se, uh, and they got caught with this money. So they, you know, going to jail and things like that. And they're black people. And I don't know if they're Democrats. I would imagine Jackson, Mississippi, uh, the lady, yes, she probably is. But just like with Tiffany Henniard, like y'all doing this to y'all people. Jackson, Mississippi is the poorest, uh, you know, uh, city in the nation. It has one of the highest black populations in the nation. So you have black leadership, misleadership. OK, you got black misleadership taking bribes. Now, this particular woman, she took a bribe from a real estate developer. Now, my thing is the first thing I'm thinking Oh, oh, really? You took a bribe? I think it was, she only made got like fifteen thousand dollars or something. Uh, but you're doing it. You're taking a bribe from a real estate developer. The first thing that came to my mind is you took a bribe from the real estate developer to probably hurt your own people. Because, again, Jackson, Mississippi is about 83 percent, 85 percent black. So you are taking money from a real estate developer to go to white people's neighborhood and develop in their neighborhoods. Something tells me you're doing it to your own people. So, again, when you hear, let's uh, vote for somebody because they black, then you hear those type of stories. It's like, well, that's because they were black, right? Now, thinking about somewhere like, you know, and I know, you know, Dalton, uh, they have their own set of issues. I think eventually they'll, uh, I think Tiffany will end up going to jail for a very long time. I just they think they're just compiling and just really waiting for her. Uh, I think they got what they need. But you think of somewhere like Jackson, Mississippi, where they have everything you could think of, water issues, just everything you could think of, very poor. You sit well, there. Look at New Orleans, the, the, the mayor down there, having yeah. the affair, uh, you know, going on trips at taxpayer expense. You know, I mean, what is going on with our leadership? And, you know, and, and I hate when I hear people like down Africa. Oh, you know, they don't, they, this is that. Africa's problem, as you know, Demetra, is tribalism. If you're not part of their tribe, even though you look like us, you're, you're not us. That, that's how they get down there. But it goes to show you that what they're doing over there is no different than what, what we do here. That's why I have no doubt we have African ties. Well, I mean, I just think uh, it's, it's self-hate is what it is. When you do that kind of stuff to your own people, wherever you are, it's, it's self-hate. Because those people would never dare think of doing that to white people. You think if, Ken, if Tiffany was the mayor of a white town, that she would, she wouldn't even, it wouldn't even cross her mind to do that. But because it's her people, they put faith in her to put her in leadership. She's a super mayor. Um, she does that to her own people, and then she's gonna double down on it, you know. Uh, so that is, to me is a wake up call for black people to stop just thinking because you look like me, you're gonna be for me. That's that's not the case. And we're seeing a lot of examples. I'm not saying that there's not black people that will do a good job, but your Adam Clayton Powell Juniors, where they at? You know what I mean? They they do they even exist anymore? So right. and, and, and and again, uh this goes back to the presidential election race. You have a woman who is who's who was not selected by anybody. She's she has a, she has yet to get one electoral vote. She was appointed by the and even even the donors didn't really want her. I think what what Biden did to stick it to him since they pushed him out is he endorsed her to stick it to him because it looked bad if it's like, well, the president wants this person to replace him and, you, and you're just going to discard her. And remember all the sister girls, you better not get rid of her. She's the vice president. Da, 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 da. But she's an empty suit. And this is what I'm saying. And people say I, I had a lot of people say, well, I, I just hate women. That's not true. I'm a political person. This woman is a bad candidate, is what I'm saying. And I'm gonna say this to you too, because I've heard that argument. Oh, y'all don't y'all hate black women. That's so lazy. It's so lazy. I hate a lazy argue uh, a person that argues lazily. I hate that because to me, to say that you was a black man or any black man that's taking Kamala to task hates black women. 
It also says that you don't have a problem with her saying, I'm not going to do nothing specifically for black people. It's also saying that you as a black man don't have a problem with her locking up black men and getting in and re refusing to let them out. It's like, so none of that stuff is important to you as a black man because you say something about her, you hate black women, it's lazy. And I wish that black women and even black men who use that as an argument, I wish you would raise your intellect because it's, yeah, there's some men out there who do hate black women. I'm not saying they don't. But in this case, I mean, they're taking her to task. What's in it for me? But that's being mistaken as, oh, you hate black women. It's like, shut up. Uh, and like I said, I'm not saying anything uh, in regards to Tiffany Henyard being a city girl mayor. She's a city girl mayor, in my opinion. But we have Kamala Harris, who, who has been failing upwards. She has failed upwards. She doesn't take responsibility for anything that she does. Like you brought up the locking the parents up for the truancy. It didn't hurt nobody, but it did. The uh, DA cases that were you know messed up, cases that were thrown out, people's lives were at stake and she didn't give a damn. My Therese Richardson case goes unsolved. All of these things and she takes no personal responsibility for it. And again, she comes from the state of California. As the DA of California and the Attorney General of California, even down here where I live, where you have massive trucks and logistics happening that was affecting um, kids' lungs and, and the breathing air, she didn't give a damn. If you want to see what America is going to look like under a presidency of her specifically, look at California. And then she has already said, and this is what I don't understand, Demetria, before we get out of here. She's going to tell black people, I can't do nothing specifically for you. No, I'm not going to do it. But without being in office yet as the president, she unequivocally bowed the knee to Israel and guaranteed armed munitions, money, whatever they need to defend themselves. But they're the aggressor. It doesn't it doesn't make sense. So if you guys are, are cool with that, these are the facts then you know you go ahead and, and vote the way you want to vote. But as a black man, I don't care she's a woman. But as a political person that I am, unlike a lot of you guys out there who are too busy working and trying to survive under this Biden Democratic policy, she's a bad candidate. And I can point it out over and over again to you. And because you're on the uh, identity politics, you don't care. And we can say she's a bad candidate without um, endorsing Trump. We're not endorsing Trump. I know a lot of y'all slow ones in the back. A lot of times y'all try to, to take that as us saying things about Kamala um, as that um, we uh, endorse Trump. Donovan and I got receipts of us taking uh, Donald Trump to task, especially when he was running. Um, right. And, and, and remember, I'm a recovering Democrat. So what does that mean? I'm fundamentally a Democrat. I'm fundamentally a Democrat. I just can't do it anymore because it's bad for me. Right. So anyway, we're going to get out of here. We're going to see you all at 5 p.m. Central Time. We'll be back. We have a very interesting topic. I won't tell you what it is, but it's very interesting. Unless something else, you know, jumps off, then we'll talk about that. But in the meantime, we also have ways to help the channel. If you so see fit, those of y'all who do, um, whatever you do for the channel, like, subscribe, donate. We love and appreciate you dearly. In the meantime, you guys have a great rest of your um, eve or afternoon, and we'll see you all in just a few. Peace.